welcome to Good News from El Paso. We are glad you are with us here today and we do appreciate it. And we believe that God, our Father, our Lord, is with you. I will guide you in today's program. And we thank God that you are here. Again, welcome. Honey, please, can you welcome our audience? Yes, amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm excited to see you all. Yes, I can see you. <laughs> welcome. God bless you. And listen and learn. Because we are here to say Jesus is Lord. And without him, there is no life. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for all these wonderful people who are listening. And we believe that, that what they will hear today is going to help each and every one of them, ourselves also, that we may know that you are the living God who loves us so much, cares about us, and gives us all things. Thank you to the Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So our topic today is our comfort and hope when a loved one falls asleep. Now, this is something that has happened to any one of us here. That is happening and will happen. There's no doubt about it. A loved one will fall asleep. So we believe that this, all our programs are important. We believe that this is important. And as we advise you, please, do not call while this program is going on. Wait until after the program and then you make your call so that you'll be able to listen and learn from the word of God what to do in situations like this. So our topic today, like we say, is our comfort when a loved one falls asleep. And we are going to read from First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. And it says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen? Amen. So Amen. this is what the scripture is telling us. We, it's, we say here, oh, this brother has died, this sister has died, husband died or child died. Then, actual, in actuality, what does death mean? To the general populace, it means that person is out, he's finished, he or she has no more thing, is no longer in existence. That is, humanly speaking, the breath has left the individual, and therefore the person ceases to live on earth. But spiritually speaking, what is death? Death is separation from God. And the Bible tells us that those who are in Christ will not die. In other words, they will never be separated from Christ. For actually, in actuality, death, as God is concerned, means someone without eternal life. That life that will be with God forever. That life of peace and joy and happiness. That actually starts while we are still in this body. That life where you are able to feel the joy, the peace, the love. Where you know that you, God has given you the power and you have that power over all the powers of the enemy. So our goal in life is not to die, never to die, never to be separated from God, whether we are in this body or out of the body. Because the body says, the Bible says, to be out of the body is to be with the Lord. So when someone leaves the body, the, the Bible calls it false asleep. Remember when, what Jesus said about Lazarus? He said, afraid Lazarus is asleep. Let me go and wake him up. Those of us who are in Christ will fall asleep. But Christ has promised he'll wake us up. And that is our hope. Honey, isn't that true? It's true. We thank God. Um, we have lost loved ones, uh, our parents. Thank God that they, they, they were old enough 
and we could say, there is no time somebody leaves this world and you don't feel it, no matter how old they are. But today, our encouragement is that those that are in Christ Jesus, just like the Bible tells us and we are talking about it here, and you know, most of us know, those that are in Christ Jesus, we do not die. We just change address, earth address from here to heaven address, heavenly home. So, as the Bible says, we, the children of God, we fall asleep. When a child of God falls asleep, that means they have stepped into glory, into the kingdom of our Father God. What a wonderful experience. I know when the, you know, we that lost, maybe you have lost somebody that you love. You feel the pain, you feel, oh, the absence, you feel something, you feel hurt, you feel something. <laughs> But yes, and that's why the Bible tells us we don't weep, we don't mourn like those who don't know God. So then, just like my husband already said, living this body means being in the presence of the Lord. That's a great encouragement. So we cannot be separated anymore from God. So we do our best here not to be separate. Don't allow yourself to be separated by falling back, by becoming, by denouncing the Christ that you have accepted. And for those who do not know Jesus Christ, wow, it's not a pretty day when you close, when your eyes are shut, when you shut your eyes, when you close your eyes, when you die. In that case, you, you, you die. The person is dead if you don't know Christ because the end is not pretty. So a lot of people don't want to hear this, but it's inevitable. So the beauty part of this is, while you are in this world, live the life that God has brought you here to live. And what is that life? Those that are in Christ, you know what it is. <laughs> At least make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, that's number one. And then number two, Live righteously. What does that mean? Live like your father, your heavenly father. So this is our word to you today. Don't weep like those who, don't mourn like those who do not know their God. You weep, yeah, you mourn, maybe for a limited time, for a time, for a time, for a season. After that, okay, rest in the hand of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You see, this life we are talking about here, if we look at the book, uh, the uh, epistle of John, the first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 11 to 12, he says, and this is the record that God had given uh, to us, eternal life. And this life is in his son. He that had the son had life. And he that had not the son of God had not life. So this life we are talking about is a life that never ends. And that this should be our comfort when we lose a loved one. We should know that God loves us. Sometimes we say, oh, uh, God has taken uh, this person, which God does, not just, just, God does not take anybody. We live our life, either we fulfill it, or one way or the other, that our physical life on earth, we leave the body. But what we are talking about here is life after you leave the body. Obviously, everyone is going to leave the body. But not everyone is going to live a successful, beautiful life after that person leaves this body. The life that one is going to live without God, without Christ, is what, they call, what is called hell. That one too is everlasting life. It's a life it's, but it is everlasting life of pain. Agony, sorrow, forever and ever. If what you feel, what we feel in this physical world, that is painful, but after a time, we lose consciousness of it and then just get, get it over with. In hell, you will never get it over with. It gets worse and worse and worse for eternity. And that is why it pains God so terribly that his children are so deceived 
Some of them believe well, when you die, you turn a pig, you turn a rat, you come back. You don't come in nowhere. When you're dead, you are either going to hell or you are coming to heaven. But the choice is yours, for, choice is yours now to make in this flesh. So naturally, we should miss the loved one who falls asleep. Because this one may be the breadwinner. This one may be the one who gives comfort at home. This one may be the one who really holds the family together and that one leaves. So it hurts. Physically, it hurts. But the thing is that the Bible tells us, like we read in the scripture, that we should not be crying over and over and over it. We don't understand the spiritual implications in that. But God has told us that don't worry, it is good. So either we believe him or we don't believe him. Like we said, the departing of that person may be painful because he may be the breadwinner. But remember, God is he who heals all pains, physical pains or spiritual pains. Maybe right now you are grieving. Maybe even as we are talking now, you have a lost one around you who really needs to be buried. Or one was buried yesterday, or one is so sick you, sure, you don't know if that one is going to make it. What we advise you to do is this. If that one is sick right now, and you know that one may not make it, please, 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 lead that person to Christ. Let that person pray the prayer of salvation. And when that person departs, you know, thank God he's with the Lord. But if it is someone who has already died and already received Christ before he or she died, the Bible said, yes, have the human grieving. Make it short. Get it over with and rejoice because that person is with the Lord. But if the person died not knowing Jesus Christ, there's nothing you can do about it. You can cry. You can pray. You can hit your head. The person is in hell. I'm sorry, this may be very hard, but that's the truth. So you cannot coop up spilled milk. They make sure the one that is in the cup does not spill. That's the only one you can preserve. So you can preserve your own self right now. You can preserve your loved ones by letting them know the importance of life after the body. So that is our advice to you. And make sure you don't let your loved ones, when they leave the body, to be, go to hell. Isn't that true, honey? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I said it before. Some of we have lost parents. And when I was driving over here, for this program, I was like, wow, thank you, Lord, that my mom received Jesus Christ before she died. She wasn't a Christian before. And I'm, I was praying, oh, Lord, I hope somebody ministered to my father. Then we, didn't, we weren't Christians. We were religious people. I didn't know any better. <laughs> so I couldn't lead anybody to Christ because I wasn't in Christ myself. So I was, this, this happened this morning while I, while I was driving over here. But guess what? We are letting you know this is message that is not popular, but it is a is a fact of life. It's the fact of life, and what we are doing this morning is that just is reminding you, this part of life happens. Be prepared so that when it happens, you know better. What brought about this topic? You see, we we traveled in December, to, uh, 2019. The people that we met in 2018, when we went to 2019, they weren't there anymore. Some of them weren't there, especially. So we were like, oh, Lord, I, you know, we hope somebody ministered to them. We felt it. And this, the Holy Spirit is telling us today, prepare yourself. You're not going to die. You are a Christian. You cannot die. You can only fall asleep. But guess what? Choose to leave this earth when you are satisfied. It's a choice you make Why you are still here. Choose to live long. Choose to live for Jesus. Choose to enjoy your life. That's why you're here. Choose to take authority. Because when you leave, then you'll be, okay, you know where you're going. You are satisfied. But it's really bad for those who do not, who have rejected Jesus Christ. They don't want to have him. Because there is a bad hell to look to to fall into who hellfire you don't want that so our message this morning is please know that this is not a negative uh, program or negative uh, topic no it is 
Facts of Life. We will be right back. Welcome back. Welcome back. To continue, our, what we are saying is, what is the attitude that we should have when a loved one falls asleep? Those that are in Christ. That's what we are talking about. That attitude is, be thankful that they will not suffer that sickness or disease anymore. Be thankful that we will meet again those that are in Christ. I keep saying those that are in Christ. Because if you're not in Christ, ooh, ooh, bad news. <laughs> so we will meet again. That's the comfort. Praise the Lord. Praise like the Lord. That. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So like we're saying, that is our comfort. And now when we say our comfort, that is our comfort as believers. As believers, that's a great comfort to us. We shall meet again. So the, for us Christians, the person has just left the body and is with the Lord forever and is happy where he or she is. So we believe that. The, to the unbeliever or not born again, they leave the body. They, everybody departs, leaves the body and departs. But the thing is that, where will you go? When we left our house this morning, we came to the station. When you left your house this morning, you didn't come to, this morning you did not go to the station. You, maybe you did not go to the mall. You went somewhere else. So we all left. We went to different places, depending on where, what we had in mind or what, where we are programmed to. So, but when you leave this body, there are only two ways to go. Like we've been saying, you go to hell or you go to heaven. But we are talking mostly to those who are born again. This is our comfort. You are going to heaven. You are going to be with your Lord. You are going to have joy forever. He said, in there, there will be no more tears, no more sorrows, no more cries, no more pains. That loved one that left the body here on earth will be with you for eternity. I will not have any more problems. And there will be joy everlasting. So, as a believer, born again, child of God, just have the faith. Be strong. Know that, I'm not saying rejoice because the person is dead. No. Rejoice because that person is destined for heaven. And you meet that person again. As long as you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. As long as you believe in the saving blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. As long as you have that hope. He said, with that hope, you comfort yourself. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, still saying about our comfort and our hope and our attitude. See, because a lot of children don't even, nobody tell, talks to them about this part of life. And then, I guess the Holy Spirit teaches them. But this is what we need to let them know. From get go, let them know there is another dimension of life so that they can choose now. Those that are old enough, they choose the right way to live so that when they leave this earth, they will not perish in hell. So we know that our body is just a house. We, I mean, we are, our body is a house, a case. So the spirit in us is the spirit of God. So when we leave this house, <laughs> then we go and be with the Lord. We've been saying that. If you are in Christ, that's where you go. You leave the house, then you go. So know that our absence here means we are going to the glorious land, heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Like we say, uh, this does not mean, like we said earlier, we should be rejoicing when a loved one dies. So the question is, does it then mean we should be rejoicing? The answer is no and yes. No in that, as we said earlier, the departed person may be the breadwinner of the house, may really be the sole foundation of that family, and this person is lost. So in that case, we are not re rejoicing that that person is lost. Again, we are not rejoicing because the relationship built with that person, especially with husband and wife, if they have a very good loving relationship and that person de departs, it is really very painful. Those are the two no's that we think of. There are so many no's in there. Honey, is there any yes in this? Oh, yes. There is a yes. Yes, you have the assurance that your loved one who, is in, who died in Christ Jesus is in a better place. No more sickness, no more sorrow, no more pains. They are in a better place. Actually, they don't want you to pray for them to come back <laughs> because they love heaven more than this earth. So that's the yes in this thing. Yes, that Satan has lost because he thinks, oh, well, if I kill this person. No, no, he already lost. He's a loser already. 
So whether you are in the flesh as a Christian or you are, you are, you are falling asleep, he has lost you. A lost case, that's, that's it. Satan has no place. So we know that we are meeting again. We will meet again someday when we finish our mission here on this earth. We meet our loved ones again in heaven. That, that has been a story. A lot of people have been meeting over there. So our prayer is that we live long enough, fulfill all our mission, all our purpose here on this earth, and then we live in old, old, old age. Ha. And then meet our loved ones when we get to heaven. Praise our Father who has given us this wonderful revelation because this is the life that we have as, as Christians. We rejoice because without Christ, oh Lord, where would we have been? Hell is not a place to go. Wonderful, wonderful. So, when we are saying this thing, we are not immune to it. To be honest with you, in 2019, I lost two people in my family. My middle sister following me and my senior brother's son, 20-something years old. It was very painful, but I know where they are. And therefore, I'm not mourning. So it, we should not call it the loss, the, the death of a loss, the loss of a lost one. We should call it the departing of a lost of a loved one to be with the Lord. And that is our comfort, our great comfort. So as we have, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 15, 49, it says, as we have borne the image of the former, we should also bear the image of the latter. The image of the former we bear is the image of Adam. Adam died. But now have the image of the letter Christ who is alive for eternity. And that is where we are today. That is our joy. That is our hope. That is our comfort. So for you who are not Christians, please, where will you go when you leave this body? Everybody, is, everybody will leave this flesh. Where will you go? If you are not, we are introducing you today to a friend who has invited us to be with him for eternity. He has a beautiful place. It's called heaven. So you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in order to be there. Now repeat this prayer after me. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just say, Dear Heavenly Father, I know I'm a sinner. And I know that you sent your most beloved son to come on earth to die for us. I now receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. And from this moment, I'm confessing that he is my Lord. Father, accept me now as your son. Let me also be, become one of your children who experience this eternal loving, everlasting life with you in heaven. Give me your Holy Spirit to guide me so that I fall not anymore. Thank you, Father, that I am now born again. And for you who are Christians, rejoice that you have that eternal life, that life which is in the Son, Jesus Christ, in that life where there is no more death. What does eternal mean? Forever. Perfect. But for that forever, you will decide where it will be and where it will not be. So make sure you maintain the joy and hope of eternal life. We love you, and God loves you. And we want you to know that Jesus loves you. Mm -hmm. And from this day forward, weep, but don't weep forever. Have the hope that God is with you and your loved one is with the Lord. Remember, Remember Jesus is the same yesterday, today, today, today and, and forever. forever. He, he does not you. change. He, he loves change. you and we love you. Remain blessed.